Hi, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. Previously, we were getting started with the SenseCap M2 Loroan Indoor Gateway. And we got it out of the box, fired it up, configured it, and we got it attached to the SenseCap portal. So now we're ready to start transmitting and receiving LoRa data from sensors. And of course, I want to start out with the SenseCap LoRaWAN card, the T1000. Yeah, there's our location in the portal there. And this is the SenseCap T1000A LoRaWAN tracker for indoor and outdoor positioning. I got the one with the sensors, of course. I got in on the Kickstarter. Comes with GPS, Bluetooth, and Wi-Fi for seamless indoor and outdoor positioning. And it also has temperature, light, brightness, and movement. There's a button and a buzzer. And it says it has battery life that it stretches for months on a single charge. Let's open the box. Yeah, I can't show you the code on the back. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to make sure I got the A version has the sensors. T1000A. There is a T1000B, just GPS and LoRa. Okay, I'm going to slide that out of the box. Got to hide that QR code again. There we go. There's the button. And there's a light sensor and there's a buzzer on that side. And then on the back is the charging port and it's magnetic. And it's very easy. This sense cap uh, product line is it's a whole ecosystem there's other sensors all LoRa enabled and you just scan the QR code and they wind up on your portal I there's I haven't done any code in the last two weeks <laughs> so I've been playing with the gateway and now the t1000 tracker card yeah see the magnet charger just sticks right to the back like that we're in the SenseCap Mate app and we're going to add a device. So bind a device means point at that QR code with your camera in the app. And there, it added my device to the portal. Now we can do some additional configuration. Press and hold the button till the light flashes. Like so. It's about three seconds. It'll stay like that for five minutes, and then it will drop back out if there's no connection. Here it is on the list after it's scanned. This is via Bluetooth. You click on the device in the list, and you have quick configuration options, advanced configuration options, and you can also update the firmware. You'll see that in a second here. Yeah, this is after I updated the firmware. We're not going to change anything on the LoRa settings. I'm just going to go ahead and send that. Okay, we see it's online. And it's got a good location, so I'm going to blur all that out. That's why I'll make another video taking this out in the wild and putting it to the test. So we're back in the settings again. There you see you can change the name. That would be handy if you have more than one. Here's the device info. There's device group management. So you can have multiple device groups. I'm going to stick with default for now. You can change the uplink interval. Now the communication service, it seems like you get 90 days free on the SenseCap portal. But after that, you see, this is very reasonable. Uh, 12 bucks for a year on the portal. Like I say, they have a variety of SenseCap sensors that all work in the same manner, easy to get on the portal. I haven't done any code for two weeks now. Yeah, see, there's the device firmware update option. I'm going into advanced because I wanted to show you I had to switch on the light and temperature sensor. There we go. Settings. Yeah, click on settings. And in work mode. Yeah, I had to switch it on right there. Enable temp and light sensor. It said it's on by default, but mine was off. It's okay. <laughs> on the geolocation tab, you can change how the location is determined. You can use GNSS only, GNSS and Wi-Fi, GNSS and Bluetooth together for indoor and outdoor positioning. 
we're working here on the SenseCap portal. We're going to take a look at our new device we've just added, the Tracker T1000A. The channel tab shows us the associated sensors on the device and it gives you like a code number representing them. So when you're in the list, there's more than one of some of these sensors and you've got to get the right one. Yeah, here I have to blur out the GPS data. So I want to make a, another video taking this out in the wild and putting it to the test. I took it, this tracker with me on my morning walk with the dogs this morning. And even with the antenna indoors in a brick building, it tracked me the entire way. I went a quarter mile square at least with the dogs. And I received 19 packets from the tracker at the gateway. You can see we got the air temperature and light, and you can also see the button activity. Now on the settings tab, these are API keys to access the data from this. And there's also a button I'm going to show you in a minute here. Yeah, here's the location information. It knows where we're at. You can see all the different uh, GPS fixes there. On unbinding, you can remove it from the portal or clear the data. I'm going to add a map to the portal here and you're going to see it's already figured out it's the T1000A and it's showing longitude and latitude and the light and temperature. So now down at the bottom I want to add a scene. So you start by giving it a name. I'm going to call it light and temperature. Click the checkbox, the scene is added. Now we can add measurements. Default device group, tracker T1000, click on air temperature and light. And we confirm. There we go, and we got these cool gauges for those two sensors. Now I didn't manage to see any accelerometer data, so I'm gonna have to read up on that. I'm missing something somehow. So I'm going to call this motion and I'm going to add the Z measurement. So you have to select the right measurement type first and there's multiple accelerometers in here. And then there's also this 4209. I see it listed in the data as motion detected essentially, but there is no 4209 in the list to choose from. So I decide I'll select the accelerometer Z because if I put this in a rocket going up is going to be the <laughs> the principal measurement. So we've added the measurement type. Now we have to select the sensor and confirm it. And now that adds a graph and you can select the graph type, line chart, bar chart. Yeah, here on the settings tab, there's this play sound button. And the buzzer on the T1000 will ring after the next uplink. There we go. You see the message came through and it will continue to beep until you press the button. This could be handy for finding your rocket even if, you know, the GPS takes you right to it if it's still hiding under a bush. Okay, so like I say, I want to take this out into the wild, give you a better demonstration of its capabilities, figure out the XYZ thing, and start thinking about putting it on a rocket. <laughs> I've got some rocket plans that uh, are going to be pretty cool. I'm also going to check out this WEO 11110 tracker. It's the same principle as the T1000. It's just in a do-it-yourself format. I got the same sensors on this board. Leave a comment down below. Give this video a like, and before you go watch more of my Seed Studio videos, please, Click on subscribe. Thank you very much.